Sonic Blockbuster at 8, but we got an hors d'oeuvre coming up in less than an hour right here on ESPN. Zion and his mates inside Cameron taking on NC State in the ACC. This has been the Jeep Halftime Report. Chris Cotter back in Bristol. Zion coming up next. Duke at NC State. They'll tip in about four minutes right here on ESPN. A little hors d'oeuvre before we get to Tennessee, Kentucky later on tonight on ESPN. A lot of great basketball still to be played. Welcome to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. We are in Durham, North Carolina, home to the second-ranked Blue Devils who are hosting NC State. Also home to Krzyzewskiville, the pop-up tent city that's been a university tradition for more than 30 years as students camp out for the UNC game. Now, some of these tenters have been here since mid-January. They stay through the cold and the wind and the rain. Kind of makes you wonder why. Cameron's a crazy, crazy place to play, and so it's really cool to get to like work really hard out here while they're working really hard in there, and then we get to go in and support them and like enjoy all of it together. The long-term tenting is for the Carolina game, but it puts you in position to have prime seats for all the games leading up to it, like tonight against that other team from the Triangle. Wait, who's our 12? I'm in with the crazy. Coming into Cameron. to be a crazy right here. Oh, come on, thank you. Go to the ground, go to the Crazies have packed in, they warmed up their bodies and their voices and they're ready to do their part to help create one of the toughest home courts in all of college basketball. Let's head up now to Bob Rashusen and Dick Nytel to tip things off. It is always a treat to be at Cameron. Bob Oshusen, Dick Vitale upstairs. You saw Allison in with the crazies downstairs. And we are set for hoop between Duke and NC State. Duke coming off of a 23-point comeback on Tuesday against Louisville. Lurking on Wednesday night, the game against North Carolina, the first of two matchups. So, Dick, you wonder if there is a possible trap tonight for Duke against NC State. I don't think so. You know what it is. North Carolina State went up the road, has beaten Duke the last two times they've played. So there'll be respect there in the North Carolina State uniform. And will we see history tonight? Yeah, I think there's a chance this history can be broken here tonight. 11-22, Coach K tied with Harry Statham. Most wins ever in NCAA basketball, whether it be Division I, II, or three. That's amazing. And Zion Williamson draws the first foul of the game. Coach K needs that win today, go 11-23. What a historic moment when you think about winning that many games. I think there's only one guy that might be able to catch him, ultimately, and that's Gino Ariema. I think Gino right now is 10-47. He is eight years younger than Mike, so there's an outside shot. And I'll tell you one thing, talking to Mike, he's not going anywhere, man. He's got some great players, so that number's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And he is a team right now that I think he feels is really getting to its peak. Well, there's no doubt. They're certainly one of the teams. I think there's a seven teams, I call it my Super 7, who really has a great chance to win six in a row with a national title. Markel Johnson finds Torin Dorn, and the reverse goes. He's been a solid player, Dorn, for that. His dad played football down in North Carolina. His brother starts at safety at North Carolina, and he came to North Carolina State, leading scorer. Cam Reddish. That's what Reddish does really well. He's got great arms. He passes the ball well. He drops the pass. That's why the NBA scouts really like him. He's got range as a shooter. On Tuesday night, he hit a couple of threes that got that comeback started and ended up scoring 16 of Duke's final 30 points as they pulled off the biggest comeback in the Mike Krzyzewski era. Unbelievable, they were down 20 with 6.42 on the clock. And to do it on the road. On the road against a good quality team. But they really picked up the pressure to have eight steals in the last six minutes. Williamson fouled again. That time a reach in on C.J. Bryce. Take a look at that great pass. Finds the open man, Reddish with the great look, the bounce pass dropped it to perfection. Notice early in this game here in the first minute and a half, they made a decision to go to three-second area and go to Zion. Zion's already had two touches in that lane, and that's going to be a problem right now, North Carolina State for Coach Keats. 
He's brought a lot of energy and enthusiasm, great personality, and he got a six-year extension. I sat with him today at lunch, talked to him, I said, hey, I'm going to hit you up for a big donation, man, for the V Foundation. Six-year extension. He actually tags Braxton Beverly with that last foul. And here's Beverly finding Wyatt Walker. A great little give and go in the lane. Really good luck by certainly when you look at Beverly, a very key player for them. Mike Krzyzewski said he's a spacer. He guys that spaces the offense for them because of his unbelievable range as a shooter. Barrett for three. And Walker's got the rebound. Torin Dorn finds a lane to the basket again. Nice drive. Poor job defensively by Duke. Team defense was not there. No communication, no rotation. I'll explain to you a little bit later about spacing with Beverly. Reddish lost it. Zion found it. Another offensive rebound. Reddish blocked by Walker. Tries again. And he will go to the free throw line. That's one of the strengths to do. Get out of the offensive glass. Coach Keats, Keats told me before the game two things. Reduce turnovers and on the offensive board. Now look, a little handoff. Now watch. A little simple basketball. Nice little drop bounce pass. Great cut to the goal. I mean, just a terrific two-man play. Great efficiency and execution. But Walker just picked up his second foul. So DJ Funderburk is at the table. As Wyatt Walker, who is not normally a big offensive weapon for NC State, but it is a space filler. He'll now head to the bench with two early fouls. Well, Funderburg comes in from, it's no relation, by the way, to Lawrence Funderburg, who was the star down at Ohio State. Came from Indiana to Ohio State. He's a long athletic player, this kid, Funderburg. He could be a very good college player. He needs to work more on his body, get stronger, according to Coach Keats. And they think he's got a really solid career ahead of him. He can shoot the three. That one's off the mark, though. Trey Jones lost it out of bounds, so it will stay with the Wolfpack. He originally signed with Thad Mutter at Ohio State. <clears throat> then he redshirted last year, left Ohio State a couple of months after a coaching change. Ended up playing one year of junior college basketball, and now as a redshirt sophomore, has a really bright future for NC State. Oh, what a nice pass by Beverly. You gotta convert oh, that. Finish, though, is Thunderbird. You gotta convert that play. Beverly made an excellent look. That's how they play it off him. I'll let him shoot the ball. Nice pass inside. Barrett hurried the shot. Offensive rebound. Put back is good. Offensive rebounding is strength of Duke, number five in America, at 14 offensive rebounds per game. Well, that was one of the keys defensively for North Carolina State. Too much box, box out, keep them off the glass. They're so strong on the glass. Duke already with four offensive rebounds in the first three and a half minutes. Dorn in the mid-range, knocks it down. He's nice, got six. Nice little 15-foot shot. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Williamson in transition, gives it up, but sagging back and getting the steal was Beverly. Beverly, good anticipation right there. Nice ball movement. Good Dorn shut play. off by Reddish after his own miss. Delorier held ball, and it will belong to Duke. Reddish did a heck of a job. Cutting that baseline off. We'll be back in the crow's nest in a moment with Dick Vitale. Getting him on camera, which uh -oh. is what America needs. Oh, wow. That's what we need. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. And welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Again, what America needs, Dick Vitale on oh, camera. Yeah. We <laughs> promised, we deliver. Bob Schusen with Dickie V. Allison Williams is with us as well. The only thing that right now might be slightly better the looking than you on TV is Duke because well, America wants to see them play. Well, anybody's better looking than me. Forget about that. But Duke is a hot item. I mean, every ratings are really off the charts when they play. And why? One of the key reasons he wears number one, Zion. I mean, LeBron James comes. Everybody comes to see this guy play. They told us they're going to have some celebrities here today as well. Former Duke players are back here because the all-star break in basketball for the NBA. I mean, they're a fun team to watch. I mean, that combination of Barrett and certainly Zion is as good 
as any tandem in America. I say they're the best. They're the best duel, and the numbers back them up. I mean, this guy's average between them like 45 points a game. No other team in America has two like that. The only tandem in America as NC State turns it over. Both players averaging over 20 points per game, and these two are well on their way to becoming the highest scoring freshman tandem in ACC history. There's the projected top 10 in the NBA draft on ESPN.com, and you can see one, two, and four, all Blue Devils. Unbelievable, look at number five, the Romeo Langford. What is going on with Indiana? It was 10 out of 11. 10 out of 11, I cannot believe it. There was so much excitement about the Hoosiers. It's a catch! You know, a lot of people were criticizing him earlier in the year, but you could see his skills. And now he has shown in the last month why he's rated so high. This guy's a big time player. I think psychologically and emotionally, he had a little problem in the beginning. He saw all the publicity, notoriety for Zion and RJ. Not that he was jealous of it all, but he said to himself, I want to be able to do what they're doing. People projected me that really that high. And I'm telling you right now, there's that 2 2 1 press. They used that big time against Louisville. And they forced the turnover. And at six minutes against Louisville, they had eight steals. And that really turned that game around. The 2 2 1 now is going to become another weapon. I'll tell you that. Look at, look at the arms right here. The length you're dealing with. You got a six, seven and a half guy with long, long arms, great wingspan. John Wooden, for years, used to start out with the 2 2 1 with UCLA and then pull back to man to man. That runner goes for RJ Barrett. Well, He's it, got four. You know, Bob, it's either Barrett, it's Zion, it's Reddish. I cannot remember a team in my 40 years at ESPN have three guys drafted in the top five of the NBA draft. That's just unheard of. Think about it. Trey Jones picks up the foul. Coming up next on ESPN, this is a great second half. Wow. A terrific doubleheader. The Saturday primetime matchup, a sonic blockbuster at Rupp, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Of course, you can watch all of our games, as always, on the ESPN app. That's a nice drive by Markel Johnson. He's a key player in this game. Johnson handles the ball really well. Williams in the trailer. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, he's a runaway freight train and express. Way he goes, and when he becomes an NBA player, his unbelievable bank account's gonna go up, up and away with all kinds of endorsements. Johnson can't hit the three. He is special, my friend, special in every way, on and off the court. Jones in the corner. That's a three. Wow, they are so explosive. The last 10 minutes against Louisville, Mike was told before the game, he said, we were absolutely sensational. First 30 minutes, it was all Louisville. They dominated us. Jay Billis said, this is the best freshman class that Mike Krzyzewski has ever had. This is nothing but freshman, but highlight play after highlight play. What an unbelievable drive right there. Dunk down was unreal. Fab five was pretty good with Michigan. Not as good as this. Sorry, Jalen. early blitz from Duke has opened up a double-digit lead. Bob Schusen alongside Dick Vitale. Allison Williams is with us here as well. Axton Beverly in and out for three. Marquise Bolden with the rebound. He's going to have to make some of those shots against that 2-2-1. Two, two, Should be open shots there, but that 2-2-1 two, two, has given Duke a real spurt. Williamson fouled by Beverly. That's his second. Don't check that they got Thunderbird on a reach in. So that's fortunate for Beverly as he still only has one. CJ Bryce comes back on as Markel Johnson will go to the bench. And Dick, you're right. When you play against Duke, anytime you have an open three, there's almost zero margin for error, right? As Beverly gets the steal, you have to knock those shots down if you're going to have a chance to beat them. Well, especially a real good shooter like Beverly, even though that one game was a nightmare against Virginia Tech when he scored 24 points. But this is a club that early in the year beat North Carolina. Carolina came back, put 113 on the board against him. They scored 96 after the 24, but unfortunately, 113 went the other way. Zion Williamson takes a seat as Jack White comes on for the first time. That's the freshman, Jericho Helms, who gives it up. 
A long contested two is not there. Thunderbird, though, tips in the Bryce Miss. Nice offensive rebound by Thunderbird. Very active, good tip. They got some quality wins, though, we look at NC State. Won the game against Syracuse, won easily. Played really great defense in that game. They beat the Qs by 15, 73 58. It only made five threes in that game. Evan Daniels will drive it. Can't knock it down. So those are the kind of plays you got to score with Daniels with a good drive to the goal. You got to convert that. Oh, you got to charge. Uh, Reddish with the offensive foul. to play with. They had a couple players dismissed from the team. Sacha Khalil Jones is no longer with the team, according to head coach Kevin Keats. That is all he would say at this time as he's dealing with some, some personal stuff. Also, Eric Lockett dismissed from the team this week following an arrest on assault charges. So the Wolfpack certainly shorthanded here tonight. They are a balanced team, though, as Beverly drives it, and he will go to the free throw line. They have four different players in their starting lineup that average double figures lurking just behind Devin Daniels who averages 9.4 points per game and they have had a handful of guys lead them as their leading scorer throughout the season so they're never a hundred percent sure where they're going to get their offense they just count on someone having a good shooting night well, as Beverly needs to knock him down from the free throw line. They got up to 17, but they got a little less six games. I mean, they had Virginia on the ropes big time. Lost a heartbreaker. Then they came back, and it was that embarrassing score, 24 points only. North Carolina and offensive shootout. And then they win their last two, Pittsburgh and Syracuse. So it's been a team that's been a little up and down. They need a little bit more consistency. Kid Johnson, by the way, led the ACC in assists last year. He had seven point seven point seventy three assists. Did a great job, and he's got to give him a solid game here today. You got to play your A game and have a chance. I firmly believe if Duke plays their A team they game, they beat anybody in America. You got to hope that you play your A plus game and they play B plus. That almost happened to Luger. Luger was at A plus for thirty minutes. And Duke was like a B at best. And then Duke became A plus, and Louisville began to see oh, that was, lights out. That was an avalanche. The minute Duke clicked the pressure into high gear with about nine minutes to go in the game, everything changed. And the kid Goldwire played a big part of that. Losing his footing was Zion Williamson somehow squeezed one through traffic. Oh, and finds Jones. Everything going his way. He goes to the deck. He's on the floor. He gets up, and the ball falls in his hands. And there's that bounce off the floor. He jumps like you do, Bob. Well, when there's food involved. <laughs> with the left hand, nice move by Devin Daniels. That's his first bucket. Nice drive right there by Daniels. Rotating from the right hand to the left hand in the lane. Zion, he's in double figures already. That's the part that impresses me the most. His ability to turn the speed on with a 285-pound body, 6'7", his explosiveness to the basket, his speed is incredible. C.J. Bryce gets the roll. Bryce transfer scored big when he played in North Carolina, Carolina Wilmington. Played on some good teams there, coached by Coach Keats, transferred, set out a year. He's now certainly a double-figure scorer. They got a good balance. Got about four guys scoring double figures. Williamson. Time missing from in close. Tough catch made by Markel Johnson. It was a great catch. He was like almost in the wide receiver. Triple penetration. Off the mark, though. He's starting to think about the shot block and ability to do. They need the nation of block shots. They're also third in the nation in steals, fifth in scoring offense. First in talent. Yeah, that has a lot to do with all those numbers. <laughs> that helps those numbers. Zion Williamson again lost his balance, but was able to get it to Goldwire. Four to shoot. Goldwire lowers his shoulder, and that's an offensive foul. 
9.45 to go in the first half. Duke with the eight-point lead. And it is All-Star Weekend in the NBA, which means some of these guys get a chance to come back to their alma maters. You can't wait to come. You know, like big men on campus here, baby. Big brother watching little brother here at Cameron. Well, you saw Tyus Jones going to break. Some other notable alums back for All-Star Weekend. Grayson Allen has come back to watch Duke. Quinn Cook, who won a few games here at Cameron. Neil Jefferson in the crowd as well. And a great old NC State guard in his own right, T.J. Warren, the ACC Player of the Year back in 2014 here to cheer on his alma mater. He's cheering them on. He might be scouting Zion. He might become a teammate because the way Phoenix is losing, it's unbelievable. A block by Delorier on Markel Johnson. Block leads the transition basketball. And Williamson has it. He just snatches that out of the air. What a tight end he can do. Wow, what a tight end. for Trey Jones. Trey Jones saying to his big brother, take a look at that big brother. I can get to the rack, man. He's trying to be in the top 20 in the draft in the NBA as well. The four guys, first rounders. Bryce leans in with the finger roll. Nice job. North Carolina State's doing a great job attacking off the bounce. They missed some conversions, but that one by Bryce was excellent. Daniel's a good slasher, driver, came the way of Utah. It's been transfer university. Barrett for three. Zion Williamson went over the back of C.J. Bryce. Well, talking about the Jones brothers, it's amazing how similar their numbers are. And who do you give the edge to? Tyus with more assists, but look at the assist to turnover ratio for Trey. 26 turnovers this season. You know, I love Tyus. Tyus was brilliant for them winning a national title. But I will tell you this. There's one area where you got to give the little edge, certainly to the young brother, and that's defense playing the ball, pressure on the ball. Trey Jones, you said, might be the best on-ball defender in college basketball. He also averages only one turnover every 26 minutes. So efficient, as is R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett, the drive to the goal. Adams might have walked. Delorean has got the rebound. Spoke to his high school coach today. He was having lunch down at the hotel we're at, the Hilton. Barrett, turn around. That won't go, and a good wall off by Markel Johnson. Nice ball movement right there. Helms from the corner. Can't knock it down. Got to make shots. You're not going to beat Duke without making shots because they're going to score a point. Kevin Boyle, outstanding coach at Mount Verde Academy in the house. He coached Mr. Barrett. Coached me other good players, too, but I remember D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons. I've Joel, heard of them. Joel Embiid. <laughs> How's that? Unbelievable. NC State basketball when we come back. 29-19, Duke's got the lead. NC State needs more points, and Allison will have a story when we come back about not being able to score much. She'll explain when we return. Duke leads NC State 29-19. That means the Wolfpack are five points shy of their 24-point total in a game against Virginia Tech earlier this month. To put that in perspective a little bit, keep in mind Duke trailed by almost that much to Louisville. They were down 23 and came back to win by two. Duke players individually have scored 24 or more points 23 different times this season. NC State head coach Kevin Keith said he has never seen anything like that game. And he actually didn't even want his team to watch that game. He said, I watch it, they did it. We don't talk about it. We just absolutely tried and flush it. But guys, they're going to hear about it. You see all the signs with the 24 points on them? Cameron Crazies are well aware, and they have plans to go absolutely nuts when the Wolf Pack hit 24 points. Tonight. You mean the Cameron Crazies would do something like that? <laughs> wow. They're, they're smart ones, Dick. They do their research. That three won't go. As Devin Daniels misses, another open look for NC State, but unable to hit the three. Williamson seals inside. Can't let him get the ball that deep. He gets that wide body in there to stretch and round that box with his physicality and touch. Unbelievable. I'll tell you one thing. 
He is so strong inside. Oh, take a look who's in the house. Oh, unbelievable. The champ, Mr. Mayweather. Did he pay for that ticket? He's got enough cash. <laughs> enough cash. Where's his donation? <laughs> he can buy the whole state. I bet he's going down to the All-Star game tomorrow in Charlotte. He likes basketball. He's caught up in a Zion fever. As is everyone. Thunderbird. Yes. He's going to be a good player in this kid, Bob. He really is. He's got a nice range. Daniels almost had a takeaway. Well, our next UFC fight night is tomorrow night with former heavyweight champ Dane Velasquez taking on Francis Ngannou. That's at 9 Eastern in the main event on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. You can catch the early prelims on ESPN Plus starting at 5.30 Eastern. The rest of the prelims, as Johnson knocks down a jumper, will be on ESPN Deportes starting at 7 Eastern. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. You know, Johnson right now is going to shoot the ball a little bit more. He's going to be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. I know he likes to be a facilitator, but oh, nobody's there. And Thunderbird has to give the foul as R.J. Barrett was about to throw it down. You know, Barrett, I said, played for the Mount Verde Academy. When you factor in St. Patrick's, that's also where Kevin Boyle coached in New Jersey. He coached Kyrie Irving, and he also coached Michael Kidd Gilchrist. So he's been around some great, great players. Duke is now 9 of 9 at the free throw line, and now Thunderbird has two. Wyatt Walker picked up two fouls in the first three and a half minutes. So now your best two pivot guys both have to go to the bench, and now no choice for Kevin Keats but to go small, and they're already outsized against Zion Williamson. And they don't have a lot of depth either, as Allison talked about earlier. Missing a couple of players. The latest player got in trouble. I rested on him. Violence is attack. Will NC State hit 24 here? In and out. The crowd's chanting 24 as Barrett gets it to Deloria. Reddish along two. Offensive rebound, Deloria. They got some rebounders. Williamson. They got That's some well. rebounders. They got on an offensive glass. You know, when you get on the offensive glass and you're one of the best, and you're one of the best blocking shots, you're one of the best scoring, you're one of the best having two dynamite scorers, and certainly Barrett and Williamson, I mean, you got the whole formula to win. You know, people forget how good Duke was last year as well with Carter and Bagley and those guys. But this team is better. This team is better. Yeah, there's no doubt. And yet they're number two in the nation behind Tennessee, who will play Kentucky at Rupp coming up in our Sonic Blockbuster as soon as we're done here at Duke. So you wonder when both teams are at their best, is Tennessee legitimately number one? Or you think Duke's the best team in the country? Well, Tennessee can play with anybody. They're strong, they're physical, they're mentally tough, they got a lot of experience, they got two star players. I mean, they got some talent. But you know what? I think the difference today is going to be big blue nation, the fans, the environment. That shot right there. But I'll get back to that Tennessee game right after this possession. Torin Dorn scores it. And it is 25 points. Oh, the, Cameron Cameron the Cameron President. I mean, they can count to 24. They got 1,500 SATs. They have an oh, abacus over there. Wow. They must be pretty good at math. Zion Williamson, yes. He's out of the field right inside. That was started right out of the gate. Get the ball to Zion inside. And he is just taking over down to that box. I can hear the critics right now that are anti, so we hype him too much. I said, but he's not going to get away with that in the NBA with those 6'11 guys. Want to bet? A chance for a three-point play for Markel Johnson, fouled by Deloria. I said a little bit earlier, he's got to try to score. He has got to score. He's got ability. You know, getting back to the Tennessee situation, I think the battle between Tennessee and Kentucky is going to come down to home court for both of those clubs. I really do. I think down in Orange Nation, somehow, some way, Tennessee will survive. And I think tonight, the VBDI, my Vital Bull Bowman that said, I put it on Twitter at slash Dickie V, 77 for Big Blue Nation, 74 for the Vols. Celebration, Lexington. You know why? They don't lose two in a row at home very often. The last time they lost two in a row at home under Mr. Calipari was 10 years ago. How many different computers factor into the Ball Dome Index? 
Greg, just by ball going. <laughs> Why? Is that a metric they use in the selection committee room? Do they do they consult? They the should DBI? use it. They should use it. They, they use it all the stuff they use, man. Come on, I watch a lot of basketball. Markel Johnson, too strong. Tapped out. Johnson finds it. Zion Williams takes it away and then draws the foul. That'll be on Markel Johnson. 39-28. Duke has the lead on NC State. And we'll step aside for a moment. Check in with Kevin Connors. Yeah, and Bob, an incredible accomplishment in college basketball earlier today. Chris Clemens going over the 3,000-point mark for his career. He had 28 today. Ninth player ever to get to 3,000 points. First since Doug McDermott. Can't wait to watch a sonic blockbuster between Kentucky and Tennessee as far as bracketology with Joe Lenardi is concerned who would he have as the one seeds and the two seeds well beginning at least going into tonight this is his group and Duke would be on the one line North Carolina very solid on the two line as well and the first of two meetings between Duke and North Carolina comes up this Wednesday well you know certainly uh, you look at those top seeds and you can't really argue with our guy Joe Joe is absolutely terrific works like you cannot believe Right now, North Carolina State having a tough time handling Zion Williamson on the inside. Down 12. And they're also over seven from three. Yeah, that's a nice pass right there. Oh, that's by you know, Deloria's the guy who off the bench, gives him a little help. Oh, he charged. He charged. And he did. He he Stevens brings up Zion Williamson with an offensive foul. But how about the block by Javin Deloria? You got to deal with them. They block shots so well, so well, they need the nation. They need the. I know Zion sort of slows them down. Then he kicks the ball out. And here's the rotation to Loria with the block shot. And then defensively, they really got rim protectors. And as Zion go to the bench, he played that last about 12, 15 minutes against Louisville with four fouls. So he's accustomed to playing a little bit in foul trouble. They picked up his second there, so Mike Krzyzewski takes him out. Can NC State get this to a manageable deficit at halftime well, with Zion on the bench? The next bit right there, you know, telegraphing passes, and they got numbers, man. Trey Jones. Oh, yeah. He's a big-time player. He just doesn't get a lot of PR and publicity. But let me tell you, he's big-time. He guards the basketball is better than anybody at the point guard slot. I'm going to tell you another thing. Live ball turnovers are a disaster against Duke. C.J. Bryce with a chance for a three-point play. Then three minutes on the clock to get some respectability to go into that locker room. Zion's on the sideline. You've got to make a little run right here. You can attack the rim a little better. Bunch good players. They're a dangerous team this club. If they could make some threes. I mean, they were two for 28. Two for 28 from the three against Virginia Tech. That'll drive a coach crazy. Beverly, who's a heck of a shooter, he was 0 for 12 in that game. You got to credit Virginia Tech, too, for playing some good quality defense there. As a team, they average about eight and a half made threes a game. As Barrett hits an elbow jumper, but they are 0 for 7 here in the first half so far, and that is not going to keep you in the game against Duke. Well, Barrett, multi skilled player. Outstanding scorer. Leads the ACC in scoring as a diaper dandy. 0 for 8 from behind the arc as Torin Dorn can't knock it down. Putting himself in a real danger point right here. Reddish. In and out. There's the offensive, offensive rebound. Blocked though inside by Helms. And the freshman keeps it alive at midcourt. There's a lob and a finish by Dorn. Nice little transition play, came off the block shot, started the break, got in transition, got a nice layup. They're going to come up with some defensive stops right here. Have a strong last two minutes. Barrett pulls up. In and out. Dorn's got the rebound. I tell you that Dorn's a really good player. Versatile. Markel Johnson with the ball fake. Back up top, a wide open three, and there is the first triple as C.J. Bryce connects. Mike Krzyzewski wants a timeout, and NC State back within single digits. Well, they got Zion sitting as an assistant coach. Lando Coach Keats likes to see him on that bench. 
Right now, down to eight. No quit. These kids from NC State. I see NC State. I think of one thing. I think of a magical moment of my buddy Jimmy V cutting those nets down and celebrating. I sat at the press conference next to his dad, Rocco, and Rocco was so excited. David Thompson era, what an era that was. Talk about, if you asked me to pick five best players, he'd be my small forward. And there's Mr. V. What a special moment that was. You know, you think about the greatest five players. Somebody says, at college level, mm -hmm. my small forward would be David Thompson. There wasn't a better college small forward than David Thompson, a Skywalker Supreme. My center Rob would be Samson. Lewis. No, my center would be Lewis. Lewis Alcindor from Power Memorial. Oh, yeah, my two guards. I'm going back to years ago. I'm going to the logo, Mr. West, and I'm going to the big O, Oscar. My big forward, I'm going to French Lake, Indiana for Larry Bird. That's my five best college players. I know you don't want to hear it, but you know what? <laughs> I got the microphone so I can use it. <laughs> Torn Dorn looking for a lob again. And Markel Johnson was not able to find him. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we'll catch you up on these stories. We've got the Bracket Bunker is open for business. We'll hear from Joe Lenardi. And Clemens reaches 3,000. The Jeep Halftime Report only moments away. R.J. Barrett lays it up and lays it in. He's so strong for the basket, that left hand. He goes in with authority, good first step. He's going to be a solid NBA player. Right out of the game, he'll be an impact player. He's got 12 here in the first half. Beverly finds Helms, and the freshman is able to bank it in. So one thing, Beverly handles the ball well. He's just not getting open looks for his three. He's got to create some space. They need his three to fall. He's capable of getting on a little spurt. They got to come up with a stop. You want to go in psychologically in single digits. Barrett. Oh. Hammer. And he will shoot two. So he gets you one on one. He's got good first step. He's great feel for the ball. He went to the right that time. He's a strong left handed player. First time I laid eyes on him, he was a second year high school player. So I'm in a tournament and I just couldn't believe what I was watching. The kid just dominated. He swept every player of the year award in high school. You name it, he won it. USA Today, A. Smith, the Whoop Award, all of them. And the only other player to sweep all of the National Player of the Year awards in high school was LeBron. So that's the, kind, that's the kind of high school career we're talking about with R.J. Barrett. Was that guy on LeBron? I'm not too familiar. Was he a good player? Yeah, I, I've, I've stumbled across a couple of his highlights. He's not bad. Wow. I did his very first game on TV in high school under Dan Schumann, the big redhead, and I was just blown away. Eight seconds to go on the half. Can NC State get this to single digits? Time. Markel Johnson. Yes, sir. Nice to Helms. Hey, Johnson can pass the ball. He's got a good feel for the game. He's not a bad shape here. He's only down eight. They only made one, one three. three in the first half. They've got Zion Williamson with two fouls. So he will certainly start off the second half for Coach Krzyzewski. But Duke with an eight point lead at the break. Let's go down to Allison. Coach Keats, what do you tell your guys when they aren't shooting well from three, but you're only down eight at the half? Well, I thought we did a great job closing the half. We didn't do a great job blocking out. We put them on the free throw line too much. You told me you had to win the battle of the free throw line. You just mentioned it. What's the message with the 16 free throw attempts by Duke? Well, we're, we're, we're they're getting second and third opportunities. We got to take those away. Okay, Coach, thanks. An eight-point lead for Duke at the break. Of course, the Sonic Blockbuster is coming up between Tennessee and Kentucky. Time for the halftime report. Reese and the game day crew are standing by. All right, let's talk about the first half of the game you're watching. Duke up by eight on North Carolina State. RD, I know North Carolina State didn't make a three, but this is what we talked about on game day. You always feel Duke didn't play that well, but they're always on the verge of just blowing you out. You feel like when they put it together, game can get out of control very quickly. Zion Williamson was terrific. Kevin Keats made a great point. They've got to defend without fouling. They can keep the game in front and contest shots and limit them to one shot. That's their only chance. You're watching the Jeep Halftime Report.
The Z Force. Oh, Zion, Zion. Spin the Jeep halftime report taking up. Welcome back to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Just about set for the start of the second half between Duke and NC State. Wolfpack, they got well over 24 points in the first half, but they still trail Duke by eight. Zion Williamson with 19 points, five rebounds in the first half. They got him going early, and it, he doesn't need much help. Got to the rack early and often. Did pick up two fouls, sat out the last three minutes of the first half, and as a result, NC State was able to cut the lead down to single digits. But if this kind of domination by Zion Williamson continues inside, Duke impossible to beat. Bobo Shoes and Dick Vitale. Allison Williams set for the start of the second half. What does NC State have to do to have a legit chance to steal this game? Well, they got to keep the ball away from Mr. Williamson. They can't let him get that ball. They got to get here the night of the ball. See, I wouldn't let you get the rock, baby. I keep it away from you. I want to go quiet, Zion. Think I can handle him? Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. He and Barrett, don't forget Barrett also. Man, they are so special. They really are. What a tandem. They've lived up to every billing coming out of scholastic ranks. Too easy. Oh, oh, easy. easy. You're down eight. You come out here. Now, this is usually when Duke really elevates their game. We've seen them against Boston College, St. John's. The first four or five minutes, they go with that killer instinct. Here we go. Guard the basketball. Don't let him get to the rim. Well, he's so smooth for a big guy at 6 7. Reddish. To the rim. He's a huge time. I'm getting a timeout right now. I'll be right in their faces. And tell them, come on, guys. Got to play with a little pride. A little Wolfback pride. Two easy layups to start that. If, come on. You don't want to give him that kind of momentum. Williamson with a steal off the Beverly mistake. You know, Beverly's got one shot. He hasn't been able to create space to get a good look. Zion Williamson gives it up to Bolden. Three dunks to start off the second half for Duke. I'm telling you, if I'm Coach Keats, I'd get a timeout, man. I took to my club. This really right now is embarrassing the first minute here. And it looks like that is exactly what we will see at NC State timeout. Oh, it's needed badly. I've got to talk a little bit about pride. We'll step aside for just a moment. 14 point lead for Duke. Welcome back. Duke has stretched their lead to 14 over NC State after a strong start to this second half. They've scored six straight on three dunks. For Duke, that continues what we saw in the first half with a solid offensive play. I spoke to associate head coach John Shire. He said offensively, they were great. Defensively is where they had concerns. He said, we need to do better a better job of keeping NC State out of the paint, controlling their drives and being more active off the ball. They also need to shore some things up on their ball screen, which they will switch depending on who's in there at the five. Dick and Bob? Tell you one thing, Allison is Coach Allison, man. I like the way she's talking about those ball screens and closing off that lane. Oh, they came back, see the timeout, set up a play, got a deuce. Now let's see if they can get some stops. Well, Duke shot 47% in the first half and start off with three straight dunks to begin the second half. So if they're going to shoot 50% from the field for the game, NC State's not going to be able to pull off any kind of a comeback. They've got numbers here, though. Markel Johnson gives it up to Beverly in the corner. There's a triple for Braxton Beverly. Much needed. They got to get him shots. He's got to create space. What's good having a great shot if you can't get free for your shot? Creating space is vital to good shooters. He averages two and a half made threes per game. That's top eight in the ACC. Barrett, speaking of being towards the top of the ACC in scoring, he is number one at 22.7 points per game, and he already has 16. I'll tell you one thing, he's a scoring machine because he scores in a variety of ways. At least look, I played him as the basket ribbon. Robin's got versatility, so many flavors, and the same with Mr. Barrett, he's got so many ways he can score the drive, the three. Markel Johnson starting to rack up some assists, though. He was number one in the ACC last year in assists per game. 
The old school finger roll for Reddish won't go, but he draws the foul. Reddish's stock keeps going up and up. The only guy that's going to stand between those three in the NBA draft is the kid down at Murray State, Morant. His stock is going way, way up as well. That foul on Markel Johnson, his third. You know, it's amazing when you looked at the dunks and Williamson dominated it, Barrett with his big day. They're only up nine. They're only up nine. I mean, you have to go to Harvard to figure out that's three threes. You make three threes, man. Give a second. Chance. Nine. Yeah. Divide, divided by three. Ah. Pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good man. You did that without even having to do what I just did. I used to use that in sixth grade, seventh grade when I taught back in Franklin School down here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. I had great memories from East Rutherford. New Jersey. Jersey. Responsible for Dick Vitale. You know, it's just one more reason for America to thank the state of New Jersey. New Jersey is great to me and my family. Underberg draws a foul. And ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC Network in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. As Zion Williamson picks up his third. And Mike Krzyzewski, at least for the time being, is going to leave him on the floor. As you said, Dick, he played almost the entire second half, it seemed, that entire comeback against Louisville on Tuesday with four fouls. Yeah, he did. Played with four fouls there. A lot of the fouls he gets called here will not be called at the next level. Good hands by Johnson to knock away the pass intended for Jones. The next level, they don't let you right now. You can't even touch a guy. I mean, it's unbelievable. That's why the scoring is exploding. People are running, shooting, unmolested threes, no physicality really taking place. You can also take four or five steps if you want. Sometimes that helps. Tell you one thing, though. They're the greatest athletes in any sport. The agility and mobility of those NBA players is so special. Trey Jones leans in off the window. He is just so, those things with great fundamental simplicity, lays it off the glass. The Wizard of Westwood used to teach that all the time down at UCLA. Get that angle, use the glass. Another assist for Markel Johnson. He sets up C.J. Bryce, and Bryce has 13. You know, when you look at Johnson, Bryce, and Beverly, they've got some good players out there. They just got to D it up a little. But Duke is so good offensively, it's very difficult to D it up. And then when you do play a good defensive stop, they come up with the offensive rebound. They get it back to Markel Johnson, who has nine assists. Bryce gives it up to Torn Dorn. Nice little two-man play. Gets it down to seven. Nice two-man play. That timeout was big. Coach Keats got to get some credit. That timeout was big after Duke came out with that explosion to start the half with the three dunks. People don't realize coaching is vital when you get in situations. Oh, we can't. I is thrown to the deck. It's a ball. NC State will have it when we come back. Boy, they got a break on that call right there. They got a break. But we got a game. Call your friends up. We got a game. And that is Kentucky, Tennessee. Are you kidding me? What an afternoon. What an early evening on ESPN. We've got a Sonic Blockbuster coming up next. As we've got Kentucky and Tennessee, and then Wednesday night, a rivalry game you are very familiar with, Dickie V. We've got the first chapter of at least two this year between Duke and Carolina. Unbelievable. There's nothing like it. It's the greatest rivalry of all. You can tell me about them all. For 35 years, I sat at courtside for now. Let me tell you, it gives you goosebumps as you look at the uniforms and you think about the great tradition. Nothing like Carolina and Duke. Well, it'll be the first opportunity for Trey Jones to experience that game, Allison. But his family, they've been through it before. Yeah, they have. And I'm here with older brother Tyus now. First of all, how fun is this? you got the NBA All-Star Weekend, and it's kind of a who's who of former Duke players. you got Emile Jefferson, Quinn Cook, Grayson Allen, and a ton of guys. What's this reunion been like for you? Oh, it's been awesome. It's always awesome seeing family, um, getting a chance to get back here. Obviously, the... Um, the environment is crazy and the atmosphere is crazy, but um, to see your guys, uh, your brothers, um, coach, and, and all the, the staff, uh, it's, it's been awesome and it's, um, you know, much needed. Everyone loves coming back here. That's why so many guys are back, so it's been great. 
and you get to watch your younger brother Trey, who I know you guys grew up playing against each other. He attributes a lot of what he's able to do to playing against you. So as a youngster, describe what it was like playing against little brother. Uh, he was always fighting to, to keep up. Um, you know, he was always fighting to keep up no matter what I was doing, what we were doing. Um, and I think that's why he's he's so mature out there on the court. Um, it plays um, the way he does is, is because um, just growing up, he was always playing, you know, against me and my friends. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's, it's special. Um, you know, it's it's awesome and a blessing to see him with the with the with the Duke jersey on. So. But how much did he recruit you to the Blue Devils? Yeah, that's what people don't know. He was um, he was on me about. Trying to watch him multitasking here. I'm making it right here. He was actually on me about um, you know what was taking me so long to commit and things like that. He's been a Duke fan since he was little, so. Um, yeah, funny story. He was he was a Duke fan long before I was, but. Um, yeah, this is the second home to us. Uh, best decision I could have ever made. And I'm so ex excited that he's living out his dream, um, you know, with the Duke across his chest, too. I know you're locked in as we're talking here. How often are you able to watch his games with your business guy? Um, I try to watch every game. Um, it, it's tough. Some, night, some nights we're playing um, at the same time. So I'm uh, checking the stats. Um, it's, all the way up to before I run out on the court. Uh, but I try to watch as many games as I can. I got to tell you, the first time I interviewed him post game, it was a little surreal because I felt like I was talking to you. Have you gotten mistaken for your younger brother yet? I have. I have, yeah. I have. If, especially if I don't have uh, facial hair. Uh, we, we get that a lot. So uh, I knew that day would, would come eventually. Uh, but yeah, we always get told we're, we look like twins. Similar in looks and in play. Guys, back to you. Thank you so much, guys. They do look alike. I mean, exactly alike. <laughs> it's amazing when you see them. Almost have to look at them side by side to tell the difference. Look alike on the floor, too, the way they handle the ball, way they defend. Here is Trey Jones. Back out to Barrett. Barrett's a cut. Well, he's having a big day. He and Williamson having a big offensive out early evening. Trey Jones almost creates the turnover. And you can see Allison's trying to talk ties. In the middle of that exchange, a controversial call on Trey. And Tyus lost his train of thought. This crowd, though, is dialed in. Cut it down to seven. Now it's up to 12. They're picking it up on the defensive end. You can see their effort a lot better as a team defensively. There it is. Right there. In with a steal, and here comes the freight train. Out to the wing to Reddish. Offensive Marquise, boards. Marquise Bolden kept it alive. And a foul will be called on NC State. And it looks like that's going to go against Thunderbird. They got Trey Jones on the floor making plays. And Big Brother loving it in he's, the stands. He's going to clap better than that. He's going to clap better than that. Cheer better than that. Come on. Tyus, give him a better cheer than that. Come on, he's the best defensive player in America on the basketball. Allison finally having to give up that good seat. Somebody paid good money for that seat. They usually don't get treated that well. Look at them digging in defensively. Look at them digging in defensively. Ellums. Blocked by Bolden. And boy, they run after the block shot. Reddish. Came up short. Out of bounds off Barrett. That'll bring Jack White back in the game. And he will replace Reddish. And it looks like Deloria is headed to the table to take out Marquise Bolden. Yeah, Deloria has done a good job when he came on the floor. Bucks some shots, gives him presence, side, size. Their bench role players really help. I mean, a goal wire in that game, defensively part of the 2 2 1 press they played against Louisville. We've had moments with Jack White. He has not played now like he played earlier in the season. He was contributing big time, making some big threes. Bryce lobs it. Thunderbird fouled by Zion Williamson right at the rim. Is that four? And that is his fourth. Yes, sir, that's four. Well, coming up next on ESPN, our Saturday primetime matchup, Tennessee, Kentucky. It's a sonic blockbuster from Ruff.
You can always watch it live on the ESPN app. Number one against number five in the on deck circle. Tell the big Blue Nation fans, do they get after it there? Do they get after it? You're talking about a six man big time. But you know, last year, Rick Barnes and his team, they didn't let them, they didn't let them bother him. They beat him twice last year. That's four. He was heading for a big day. Doesn't want to come out. Look at him. He hits. He's a little zebra's putting me on the bench. He has a ticker that you can't teach. Right? I mean, if they're up 29, if they're down 29, anything in between. Two minutes to go in the game, two minutes into the game. He is first to the floor, unbelievably intense as Barrett comes up short. To me, that's the most impressive thing about him as Markel goes to the he should have went to that basket quicker. He took a little slow step there. What the easy way. Now this place was about to come apart at the seams if Jack White hit that triple. Uh, he knocks a lot of that layup instead of going in strong. You know, he's... Markel Johnson flips one up around Jack White. Instead of getting the easy layup, he gets the shot. Degree of difficulty because he figures he's going to get a 10 on that baby. And he stayed back to single digits with Zion Williamson on the bench with four fouls. Can they whittle away at this lead without Duke's best player on the floor? Well, they're not going to get the scoring inside like they were getting with Zion, so that's certainly a big plus for NC State. Not too bad when you've got the number two pick in the draft to throw into, though, as R.J. Barrett will shoot free throws when we come back with 11 and a half minutes to go. Duke on top by nine. Jack White, hustle play at the rim. Look at the hustle. He goes down. He finds unbelievable. And now he's going to come up with the deuce and the catch. I told him before the game, I said, let me tell you, Zion, what impressed me the most is watching you dive on the floor with a 25-point lead against St. John's. Hi, I'm Zion Williamson. I'm a freshman at Duke University. And here's why I think R.J. Barrett should win the award. You know, he's a great leader. When we needed him to step up and play point guard, he did it for us. Fierce competitor, and he just wants to win. He's like my brother, so you know I like to see my family succeed. So I hope he can win it. Our Wendy's wouldn't watch courtesy of Zion Williamson as both he and R.J. Barrett are late season wooden top 20 candidates. And you'd have to think very comfortably in the top five. Well, no doubt about it. I spoke today to uh, the coach of R.J. Barrett, Kevin Boyle. He said he loves Zion, and Zion loves him. They got such an incredible relationship. There's no envy, jealous of who gets the most publicity, who'll be number one, number two. They're all about bringing success to that jersey, and they all want one thing. They want to be in Minneapolis, and they want to cut the nets down and win a national title. What do you think this team taught themselves and taught Mike Krzyzewski about themselves coming down uh, from 23 down on the road on Tuesday? Well, then the game is never over. I think they're thinking with our explosiveness, no matter what the margin is, the game is never over. And I think also many of them said, we can't put ourselves in that position. We got to play with much more focus in the game and not allow that to happen. But you got to credit Louisville was absolutely brilliant for 30 minutes. Marquise Bolden called for his second. This could be a special day for that man we're looking at right there. He's had many, many momentums in his life. Thinking about Hall of Fame honors, you think about certainly being part of winning three gold medals as the leader, the coach of the team, the Olympic team. Think about all-time record in men's basketball with wins. Unbelievable. Blocks by Bolden. Bolden. Shot clock at three. He's part of that shot blocking group as well. Shooting the ball has really been a problem for drug dealers sticking their losses. Shooting the basketball. No substitute with guys that can make shots. And the guy that can really shoot it for that, Beverly, can't seem to get free for a shot. Right to the baseline. Gives it up to Bolden. And he will go to the free throw line as Wyatt Walker is called for the foul. You talked about Coach K. You talked about Halls of Fame and Hall of Famers. I'm sitting next to one because Dickie V, oh. your career accolades, I know, but we had to embarrass you at least a little bit because you are receiving, and it was announced this week, a Lifetime Achievement Award during the Sports Emmys. The only other analyst, as far as I know, that is on the list that you are now going to join, John Madden. 
You're the second ever te television analyst to join that list. Unbelievable. Pretty good. I, I tell you, it brought me to tears when they called me because really that award belongs to all of ESPN. I've said it once and I'll say it again, Bob. I'm not a broadcast. I'm a jock out of a locker room, gave me a microphone, said go out and talk about a game you love, and that's what I've done for 40 years. The real broadcast, the guys like you and Dan Schulman and all the play-by-play -play guys who get in and out of commercials, I see there in awe. Listeners, our producers talk in your ears while the game is going on. But really, uh, I owe that to all of ESPN. They've been my second family, and everybody knows my family means everything to me. Dorn from the corner hits a three. All right, I'll take it. Well, it really, no, really, I, I, I want to basically let people understand with the graphics operators, the cameramen, the people behind the scenes, the stage managers, the play-by-play -play guys, all the people, producers, directors, that award is for them because they made it happen for me. Wow. Speaking of some of those legendary names you will not be joining, wow. and some guys you even worked with, wow. you, you've talked about working with Keith Jackson. Absolutely, we're going to Keith. Oh, Nelly used to have great stories on Friday night, football stories. Keith loved, obviously, football like I love basketball, and I love sports, so I'd pick his brain all about Paul Bear Bryant and Bo Schembechler and all the greats that he knew him inside and out. We had great moments. Our producer, Kim Belton, used to be there as well. I've worked with so many great guys over the years. I mean, young guys like yourself coming up. I, I've worked with so many giants from Brett Musburger. I mean, you think of that list, Vince Scully. I look at the list and say, my name, what's it doing here with Keith Jackson and Vince Scully and Howard Cosell? Are you serious, Dickie V? I got a little tear in my eye just now when you called me young. You are young, man. Hey, when there's 79, man, everybody's young. My bald spot says different, but Markel Johnson left alone for three. He's got it. Hey, he liked hearing about the ball spots down to eight, baby. They're not going hey, away. They don't go away. Every time you think Duke might deliver that knockout, NC State has taken the punch and responded, and they keep this game at least within range, coming up on nine minutes to go. Can't get it under. They think they headed to seven. That's as close as they've gotten. Oh, Jones wide open. Corner. Another offensive rebound from Marquise Bolden. And that's what Coach Keats said. Offensive rebound is so important in this game. So important. Good defensive play right there. Held ball created by Wyatt Walker. It will stay with Duke, though, and that'll get Thunderbird back up off the bench. He's going to check back in with four fouls. You know, I love the idea that at uh, North Carolina State, they named the Reynolds Coliseum Arena, the Valvano Arena. Really terrific. Is it the Coach Keats? This is background. He worked with Rick Pitino for years. Rick Pitino used to brag about him all the time. Said, boy, he's quality. Jones, a rare turnover. But you're gonna make Daniels the other way. Tries to cross over. And he is fouled by Barrett. So Devin Daniels will go to the free throw line to try and cut the lead down to six. I'll tell you what, Daniels is a slasher. He's a transfer. Came from the University of Utah, sat out along with Bryce. Averaged about 10 points a game a couple of years ago as a freshman at Utah and averaging almost the same off the bench as a redshirt sophomore for NC State. You know, some people have forgotten, but earlier in the year, they were as high as top 15 in America, North Carolina State. They went through that little slide. You gotta make these free throws. You're playing a team like Duke. You're playing on their floor. You gotta convert it to the free throw line. You cannot allow opportunities to put points on the board to get away from you. down to six and wow now instead it could go up to ten nc state now four of eight at the line so they're not there often enough and when they get there they're only making 50 percent they're not shooting the three well either as that quick dick vital math by the way to see how i quickly was able to come up with some sure. action like daniels that. knocks it out of bounds you'd be an a student in my class at franklin school in east rutherford you get a's yeah. for that in sixth grade yeah North Carolina State had a solid performance in the last game against Jim Beheim's Syracuse team. Beat him by 15. A great great step back. Wow. Wide an offensive rebound. Wow. Great effort by White working the glass. They get more playing time. He keeps that up. But I'll tell you this, that's what's crushing and causing a problem for NC State. The boards, baby, the boards. Even with Zion out. 11 offensive rebounds for Duke. That's one of their strengths. 
Hill Johnson, Reddish, trying to stay with him. At the free throw line, Johnson too strong. And Bolden has it taken away by Torin Dorn. Can't finish with the left hand. White, Dorn, they come together. It's wrestled away. Michael Stevens wants to calm things down. Hell ball, and it will stay with NC State. Tell you one thing, Dorn battles bad. He battles. His dad was a good football player, and so is his brother now in North Carolina. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. So never gone away. They turn it uh -oh, over. Three on one. The yes, line. sir. Oh, up and away. And the camera crashes. Go bananas. They love their dookies. All those 1,500 SATs sitting there cheering, going wild. Guys, during that last timeout, Coach Keats told his guys, I love what you're doing. Probably didn't love that after the timeout, but he said, We need to turn our energy up right now. It's Torrin Gordon without a shoe. A shoe. He blew a tire. He did. Shoe. Oh, he blew a tire. Beverly throws one up as Torrin gets his shoe back on. And guys, the big point of emphasis down the stretch, though, they have to rebound. He said, I need all five guys attacking the glass. If you rebound, we will win this game. Talking positive, he said, Luke, Coach K. He said, we're going to win. We're not losers. We're going to win down finish. Chance to get it back to single digits again for NC State. And with the left hand, able to connect is Devin Daniels. He's a good driver. He's an excellent slasher. He knows where he wants to get with the ball. He goes north-south really well. But now you got to defend. Now you got it down to eight again. Now you got to lock it up as a team. Good defenses, man. You got to communicate. Zion getting ready to come in. Offensive foul call. Moving screen on Marquise Bolden as Williamson, with four fouls, comes back in. As that's Bolden's third. That was an excellent call. There is no doubt about that. He cannot move. He's got to be stationary and lay that screen. And Duke is now out of fouls to give. Well, you might be on the Mount Rushmore of broadcasters, but you've got your book out, the Mount Rushmores of college basketball. Wow, Tell people that. how they can get it and what happens when they do. I tell you, they're the best players right there. Best coaches, best players. Patrick Ewing. Yes, sir. One of my four best, Ralph Sampson. And Mr. Leitner. A lot of people say, well, where is bias? Where is certainly people like Tisdale? I agree. I mean, you can you can put a lot of guys. Those are just my choices. You get the book at DickVitaleOnline.com. You go there. You get an autographed copy. I had an unbelievable, it's unbelievable of the people that bought it from out of Kentucky. I was signing books all day in the garage. So I want Duke to come out there, fans, and buy that book. And North Carolina State fans, why? Because the money goes to the V Foundation and Jimmy V. All of it for kids battling cancer. So again, just go to DickFightsOutOnline.com and get your Mount Rushmore book and get an autographed copy. If you don't want an autographed copy, go to Amazon.com and get one. Beverly off the screen. Pins it. And the arrow will give it to Duke. You know what? He can't get open for shots. That was a rush three right there. Really rushed. I think a little frustration set again. Trying to get space. You know you're a good shooter and you can't get open looks. Look at the size differential. Beverly playing reddish. We're talking about a mismatch. Size wise. Williamson. Just throw it up on top. He's going to go get it. He's had a big, big evening. Two player of the year candidates hook it up there. Barrett, Desire. They love playing with each other. They love being with each other. They love winning together. Daniels tries to drive it again. Now it's Funderburg off to Beverly for three. Short. Dorn keeps it alive but slaps it right to Marquise Bolden. Abushuzan, Dick Vitale, Allison Williams under five and a half to go. And Duke still maintaining that 
double-digit lead, but not comfortable enough to turn away yet. Well, you know, one thing about Trey Jones, the leader of the club, the catalyst on the point guard slot, he always plays with great poise. There he is with the basketball, 15-foot jump shot. Goes right down, takes the good, simple shot. There he is with great hustle. He's one of my defensive best five. Might have picked five guys right now by all Dickie V defensive dynamos. He's one of the five. Look at him put pressure on the ball. Look at him playing defense right there. Look at that focus. Look at that focus. Oh, wow. You kidding me? You kidding me? I tell you what, though. He did a great job defensively. They broke down the other side, and Michael Jets actually made him play, pay with the big lob over the top. Ten assists for Johnson. I love Trey Jones, man. He's a coach's dream at the point guard slot. Another lob to Williamson. And he is fouled on the floor by Devin Daniels. See where the ball's coming. And he goes gets five. His buddy missed the power. The two of them are one, two in the conference. Throwing the ball over the top. There's the little alley oop pass. You know, let me just share this with you. You know, I hear some guys saying that in a situation you cannot, you cannot use a situation. I'm gonna get later because right now they're gonna put the ball play. I want to share something though with you. So now you got to come up with some decent defensive stops. You're down 10, it's 4 on the clock. He really handles the ball well for a big guy. So does Reddish. Doubling up on Zion. Somebody's open. Somebody's open. Williamson double clutches with one on the shot clock. And a foul is called of Kevin Keats. And his entire coaching staff can't believe it. Thunderbird has fouled out on that play. That's a really tough call for NC State. As they not only get Thunderbird fouled out, but there was one second on the shot clock on the Zion double clutch. Coach Keats not very happy about that. So that'll put Wyatt Walker back in the game. The point I was going to try to make to you, I want to share this with you. Some people are saying, you know, you cannot in a situation like we had that game, which was Zion right here. Like a lot of basketball. A lot of basketball there, yeah. Save that thought. I will. We're step aside when we come back with four minutes to go. Duke maintaining a 10 point lead. Speaking of basketballs, nice to have Zion go up and grab it for you. Top team in the land invades Big Blue Nation. Hold up, let me get up in Tennessee it now. aims to deliver a state. But number five, Kentucky looks to defend Rock. It's a top five showdown. Tennessee, Kentucky, tonight at 8 on ESPN. Kevin can't wait for that as not only are we at Cameron now next stop Rupp Arena not too bad in terms of a doubleheader as Duke's four minutes away from holding on against NC State and Dick Vitale here with Bob Shoes and alongside Allison Williams as well you were making a point before yeah, we well, the point I was making you know like we had that game with uh, uh, LSU and Kentucky on a situation where it was not reviewable judgment call there goaltending like, you're talking about goaltending and offensive interference and I thought there was a more deal because the offensive boards again it's foul but I, I thought it was a more deal of Kentucky when you look at the overhead certainly replay it looked like it was there but the point I want to make is so many people have said well judgment calls can't be reviewed well you're wrong because in the last two minutes of a game you're allowed in a judgment call on when a ball goes out of bounds for example you and I had the game Florida State and Duke that game coming down to the end and it was a review at the at the replay counter to look at it and to make that decision that gave the ball to Duke and then they hit the three. So you can do there because that's a black and white situation. It is unbelievably clear one way or the other you definitive. Same thing with a deflection late in the game. You can use it, but you cannot use it in terms of the offensive rebound situation in terms of the goaltending because on a silver, the reason for that is because not everybody has the replay angles to be able to see that. You can see that you can't make the definitive. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What about that? What about that, Frey Trey? What about that talent? Oh, my. Is he so special? It's not hype, man. It is fact. He is for real and legit. I'm going to say this. One more comment about that. You know what they should do? 
has not stopped the flow of the game. Like this game has not stopped the flow of it. We're going to the monitor, the monitor, the monitor. Talk to Coach K about it. He couldn't agree more about how so many games, the flow of the game has stopped because they run to the monitor for every little thing. Why not do this? Why not that? There it goes up, up, and away. Hey, the last two minutes of the game, no replays during the course of the game. Rem Go to human error as part of the game, but in the last two minutes, allow the officials to use the replay anytime they want for any call. And you, you keep a flow in the game. And you, you got it to crunch time when the game is on the line. Yeah, I agree with that in basketball. The problem with that theory... But I'm we're in sure. basketball, yeah, not football. Not, I'm, I'm not talking your Jets football now. Oh, you've talked <laughs> about my Jets more than once this season, and <laughs> it's never been complimentary. Uh, uh, it's always been complimentary. I love oh, you, Jets. Yeah. Joe, name it? Are you kidding me? Give me Joe Willie. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I like your idea, too, about the 60 seconds. I think all replays in all sports should be 60 seconds long. If you can't see it in 60 seconds, it wasn't clear enough to overturn whatever your call was on the floor. It's Hyman Williamson oh, is man. unstoppable. He is unstoppable. You're right, He's Robert. Got 28. 28. Out of foul trouble. Shooting percentage off the charts. I know everybody's around the basket, so be it. The name of the game is to put the ball in the basket, and he does it. He doesn't take advantage of his strength. Helens, nice shot fake and a chance for a three-point play. There's Mr. Mayweather. I tell you what, I met him with the fountain blue. And there I am. I was boxing with him. I said, he's smiling. I said, come on, champ, put him up. You and I are going to go at it. This is funny. I'm in fountain blue in the lobby, and there must be about 12 guys wearing shirts, big 300-pound guys, shirts, the money, the money team. And I said, I ain't going to go down that hallway. I said, no, Dickie V, nobody can go through there. And all of a sudden, he spotted me. He said, let Dickie V through. He's my man. And I went over to him, and he was there. He was treating his people to a special gift out of the jewelry shop. He really takes care of his people. Oh, yes. What a combination. Show me a better combination. I want to see a better tandem. You show me. You got to go down to Charlotte, baby, to the NBA to find better combo than those two guys. Wide open three for Helms. If they play their A game, nobody can beat them in college. Especially, I'm telling you, if they have their A game. Now, they are capable of slipping. We've seen it, Gonzaga. There's some teams out there who, if they play their A game and they play a little B+, plus, uh, he's having a field day. They cannot. That's it for Zion Williams. That's an m and That's a total mismatch. Third time this season he has hit 30 in a game. Allen's for three. He hits a triple. And a quick timeout is called by Kevin Keats with 1.24 to go, which means we are less than a minute and a half of game time away from our sonic blockbuster. As coming up next, it's Tennessee and Kentucky. Well, let's remember this here. We're going to have 11-23 most likely for Coach K. Think about his unbelievable run. It started on November 28, 1975, his first W Army over Syracuse. November 4, 1980, he was introduced as the Duke coach by Tom Butters. And then in 1980, he got his first win as a new coach. He beat Stetson on November 29th. November 2011, Madison Square Garden, I was there. He passed his mentor, Robert Montgomery Knight, with win 903 to become the winningest coach in Division I. 2015, he gets his thousandth win, beats St. John's. And today, and today, you are seeing history being made here as he will score 11 23 and become the winningest coach in the history of the NCAA in Division I. Two or three. That's a pretty good record. Oh, yeah, by the way, he has three gold medals. By the way, he's been part of six, really, if you go not only Olympic team, other international competition. What an incredible achievement and record. And about to win his 1,050th game on the bench at Duke. I say he has earned a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin White fight AD here. What a combination they have. So only one minute to go before we get you to the second. Between Tennessee and Kentucky. Zion Williams.
Thompson continues to add to now a 32-point performance. And he will go the line for an end one. You can see the love and fear right there, those two guys, Barrett and Zion. A lot of times you get two stars of that quality, you get a little friction sometimes. Nothing here, man. Nothing at all. Great chemistry. And that also gives R.J. Barrett a triple-double. 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. Only the fourth triple-double in Duke history. And the only other freshman to do it was Gene Banks. The question I have is, who are going to be the other three guys to make the All-ACC team? Because we know two guys anybody could pick. Well, the question I have is what you see coming up between Duke, uh, between Kentucky and Tennessee next. I see the big, nice drive right there. Nice drive by Johnson. I'm telling you this, what I see is a game going to the wire, and I think the big Blue Nation fans are going to be absolutely the difference. I need 77-74. I look for Kentucky to win that game. They just don't lose two games in a row. The stats don't lie. Coach Calipari's lost two games in a row the last time 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Well, you can catch Sports Center later on tonight. Gonzaga San Diego will be backed up by Bucci and Anderson. Jay Billis will join the guys to break down the big showdown between Tennessee and Kentucky. A look at Murray State's John Moran. He is a projected top five pick and the best from NBA All Star Saturday in Charlotte. All that and more on Sports Center on ESPN and the ESPN app after Gonzaga San Diego later on tonight. Hey, you got Zach has not lost the game. John Shopey and I did a game when they lost to North Carolina. And I turned to Boone and I said, hey, I'm going to tell you this, my man. They ain't going to lose another game. Another game until maybe the NCAA tournament. They're on a roll. I don't know how many rolls they've won. They have not lost since. They're a strong basketball team. Suffered another tough break until he's out of here. You didn't agree? Mark Few has accepted to be one of my honored guests in 2020. Great job he's done there with Gonzaga. Look at this guy. Unreal. Fourth triple double in school history. Not going to get many of those because they spread the wealth so much with so much talent on the floor. It's not like one guy dominating the ball. NC State now out of timeouts. As Goldwire gets it across the timeline with 30 seconds to go. He played a big role in that win over Louisville. Eric Lennon well, respected his teammates at center. He didn't score a lot of points, but he was responsible for that 2 2 1 press being so effective. Oh, Eric drives oh. it. Oh. Look at Jones. Look at Jones. He can play for any day of the week, Robert. Any day of the week. Down to the last 10 seconds. And that's off to Rock. Oh, Jones. Look at the ball. Look at him hustling. Are you kidding me? He's hustling like that. Look at him up big. That's why they're champions. That's why they're winners, those kids. You got to really respect that, Robert. It's like I respect you. I got to respect that. 94 78 is the final as Duke wins it going away. NC State hung in there as long as they could, but there is that historic win for Mike Krzyzewski. There's the historic moment. Mike Krzyzewski, there's the steal. Now watch him diving on the floor. How many guys are going to do that? The game's all wrapped up, and there he is diving. Loose ball. What a moment, Coach K. An incredible congratulations, Michael. Just add to that resume, my friend. And someday you can walk in with that resume and say, Mr. White, I think I deserve another raise. And I think he may get one. Once again, the final score. Duke over NC State, 94 to 78. Well, we said we've got three of the top five teams in America on our air tonight. You just saw number two. How about number one and number five? It's time for a sonic blockbuster. Tennessee, Kentucky, Rupp Arena, the spot. Let's head to Dan Schulman and Jay Billups. Guys.